Hello, welcome to Sunday Online from St John's Vicarage as usual. It's very good to have you worshipping with us today. I hope you enjoyed the extra bank holidays last week. I thought you might like to see a couple of photos of the Pentecost Jubilee service at Christchurch Meadows. The weather held for us, thankfully, and um, these were some of the things that went on. That's Andy leading the service. Uh, we had input from the Mayor and the Bishop of Reading as well and an excellent Salvation Army band up there on the stage. So we're thankful um, for all that was good last Sunday and indeed over the whole Jubilee weekend. Today is Trinity Sunday when we ponder the mystery of the Trinity, God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit existing in relation to one another in perfect unity, in harmony. We have a relational God who wants to relate to us and wants us to relate to him, for us to get to know him better. And Anthony is our preacher this morning and he'll be saying a little bit more to us about that later on. Let's just spend a moment in quiet now as we prepare to worship God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Sing his, bless the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise, and exalt him forever. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all. To you be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your Spirit ever renew our lives and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. So let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our Bible readings this morning are read to us by uh, Elizabeth and Lynn. This reading is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. A reading from the Gospel according to John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Spirit of truth, lead us into all truth. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Oh, man. Good morning. Um, this morning's gospel reading comes from John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The fourth planet in the solar system is Mars. Pick some flowers. The average height of a man in the UK is 175 centimetres. Paint a blue, oh, paint a wall blue even. Oh, by the way, um, did I mention that um, you should be remembering these facts? Oh, sorry about that. Um, I haven't got time to go back over those ones. If you can just try and remember them, try and get them in your mind now, any of them you've got, okay. Um, I'll give you a couple more. I haven't got much time here. Um, there are an estimated 20 million penguins in Antarctica. And uh, one more instruction, wave at your neighbour, okay? You could do it now, but try and remember it for later. Okay, well, there's my list of things. Um, I haven't got any more time to go back over them. Um, I have quite a long list of things I actually wanted to uh, tell you this morning, but uh, quite frankly, if I did now, I don't think you'd remember them in any case, would you? And that's how our passage started today. The speaker of the passage is Jesus, and he's talking to the disciples um, in the time before he was arrested and then he was killed. And he's so shared so much with them already. And he has so much more he could share with them, but he is running out of time. And they wouldn't believe him if he told them what was going to happen next in any case. And quite frankly, they've struggled to understand the things he's told them up to this point. So he says, I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. But then he goes on to say, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And by the spirit of truth, he was referring to the Holy Spirit. The disciples would have had some understanding of the spirit, um, as it was mentioned in their scriptures, the Old Testament. But it was usually associated with particular individuals at particular times. What they didn't know is that after Jesus had died, the Spirit would come down and would fill them all and would help them to learn more about God. Just like the disciples, we don't have Jesus physically with us. And just like the disciples, as followers as Jesus, though, the Bible promises that the Holy Spirit will be with each one of us. And his job is to reveal the things of God to each of us. Because no matter how long you've been a Christian, how old you are, we have to admit that every single one of us can get to know God better. And it is the Holy Spirit's job to help us do that. The next bit of the passage, though, let's read that bit. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare the things that are to come. He will glorify me, and that's Jesus here, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. 
That's quite a complicated weaving passage. But basically, if we boil it down, just simplify it just this morning, the passage is saying, Jesus is saying, that all three parts of God are involved in, in helping us learn more about him in the work. The Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's a fairly complicated idea. We, you know, we call it the Trinity. But in terms of listening for, to God and praying to him, it actually, what it actually really means is that it, we don't have to get caught up in who we're praying to. Is it God the Father? Do I should have prayed to God the Father? Or is it Jesus? But the Holy Spirit, is he the one who helps us communicate? It doesn't really matter. They are all parts of God. But I think it's really reassuring to know that when we find it hard to talk to God and to listen and hear from God, the Holy Spirit has a specific role here of helping to help um, helping to communicate to us things of God. So how does the Holy Spirit reveal God to us? How does he go about doing that? Well, although this passage uses the word speak, it does, very rarely do people actually hear the, an actual voice. Rather, the Holy Spirit has lots of different ways he reveals God to us. And if we read other passages in the Bible, actually, it doesn't use the word speak often. It uses reveal or makes known. There's different ways. So what are some of those words? OK, I wonder at this point, um, how many of the facts from the beginning that you still remember? Can you think of any of them now? It was pretty hard, wasn't it? You just had them verbally and how on earth are you going to remember that? Well, wouldn't it have made your life easier if I'd said, look, here's a, here's a list of the facts. I've got them here and um, I give this to you and you've now got that available. That would make it so much easier to remember what I'd said. And in fact, that's what I've done. You've got the list there. And there's some space on there for things that you're going to learn in the future. The Holy Spirit works in the same way. He reveals to others and then helps them to write it down for us. It's what many of the disciples did. They wrote down um, what they'd heard from God, what had been revealed to them. And that's what we have today in our New Testament. So when we read the Bible, we are hearing from God. And I find that the Holy Spirit, for me, at different times in my life, in different places, puts certain verses, makes them more clear to me, depending on what's going on in my life. And that is the Holy Spirit revealing God to us. Secondly, the Holy Spirit uses people to reveal God to us. Haven't you ever had times in your life where you're going through a situation and then suddenly someone comes and tells you a story or tells you about their situation? Just something that totally transforms your way of looking at things or reveals something about God's love, his compassion, his perspective on the world. And the other person may not even be aware. God uses other people to reveal the truth of himself to us through the Holy Spirit's work. Without the Holy Spirit being in us, we can't tune in and get the signals or understand what's coming from other people. The Holy Spirit helps us in that. Third way. Now, if I showed you some objects or some things happened in your life, you might find that they revealed God to you. There are things that happen in our life. So if they happen in a certain order, it just builds up a picture. So let me show you a couple of objects. So first of all, we've got some salt. Okay, fine. We've got some salt. It could mean lots of different things, actually, having salt. Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe I'm going to make some salt dough or um, 
Um, I'm going to try and get some red wine off the carpet. Does it actually work? I don't know. Okay, so we've got some salt, um, but hold on. Okay, let me go. Okay, got some eggs now. Right, that makes things a little bit different, does it? Um, maybe bring in some sugar. Okay, getting a little clearer maybe. And then if I bring in one more thing, comes along and we have some flour. Quite quickly, I reckon a lot of you will have figured out what this is about. Maybe not when the first thing happened, but as a series of things happened here, were brought in, you probably worked out that I could use them to bake a cake. Maybe not if you don't know how to bake a cake, but you know, for a lot of you, you might have figured that out. And it's the same thing in our lives. I find that God uses our experiences in our lives to reveal himself. And I find that quite often they are a series of different things, but a bit like the ingredients, when they come together, one after the other, it gives us a very clear message in our life. Okay, my final example this morning is through our senses. Now, in this bag, I have um, some objects. We have objects again, We're not baking objects this time. And if I describe them to you, so I'm feeling in the bag and I've picked one up. It's light, it's uh, fairly small, made um, of cardboard, it feels like, with um, bumps around the edges. Actually, hold on, it's got um, or a flat edge and then it feels like there are sort of holes in some sides and bumps in others. Pretty quickly, I guess, especially if you were the one filling in the bag here this morning, you'd realise that I have a jigsaw piece and that there is a puzzle to be put together in this bag. And you can know that and I can know that without even seeing the actual jigsaw piece. It can become clear without me saying a word about that. And I think the Holy Spirit works in the same way. It uses our senses, our sight, our hearing, our smell, our taste even, and touch to reveal God to us. And sometimes just a feeling within us, an emotional feeling that we have. There was a moment for me in particular when I remember feeling God revealed to me in a very special way. One day I was upset, even angry. And I marched up a mountain out of that anger. And I shouted at God. I literally shouted at God. Don't worry, I was alone, I think. And then suddenly, in that moment, I looked out and became aware of the amazing view of creation in front of me, reaching out the valleys and the mountains, and I became aware of God. I became aware of his presence in me and with me. And I also felt a tingling, an emotional feeling inside me at the same time. And I knew it was God there with me. And at that moment, God didn't necessarily take away my anger in a moment. He didn't answer a problem or tell me the next step, but he revealed himself in that moment and just gave me a big heavenly hug. And God can work in those ways. The Holy Spirit in us helps to reveal God to us. These are just some of the ways that the Holy Spirit can reveal God. But if there's one thing, maybe just to focus on, as I finish this talk this morning, is to know that God does want to know you better. That at no stage in your life, no matter what age you are, or how old you are, how long you've been a Christian, is there not more of God to know. We just need to be open to him. The Holy Spirit will help you to know God better. We just need to be open. Let's pray. Hi, 
thank you, Lord, so much that you want us to know you better, that you do reveal yourself to us in so many different ways. Help us, Lord, to use all our senses. Holy Spirit within us, lead us to God as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's worship together now.
let's pray together. Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, thank you that you are a God who delights in your creation and that you relate to us in love. Help us to get to know you better. Open our minds to fresh revelations of who you are and how you work in our world and in our own lives. Give us eyes to see you, ears to hear from you, hearts that are open to you and lead us into truth. Help us to discern your voice above all the other voices that clamour for our attention. Help us to make space and time to listen for your still small voice as we read your word or spend time in your creation or listen or watch the people you've placed around us and in whom you dwell. And may others hear you or see you in and through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for ambassadors and diplomats, and all those in positions of authority, that they would govern and negotiate responsibly, with humility, seeking justice and the good of all. We continue to pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and plead with you to help bring about a just and lasting peace. We pray that Russian troops would withdraw and that the forces of evil that have galvanised this war would be overcome. We pray in the same way for peace in Yemen, Syria, Myanmar, South Sudan, Congo and northern Nigeria. We pray especially for the church community in Oul, in Nigeria, who suffered the massacre during their Pentecost service last Sunday. We pray that those responsible would be brought to justice and for your comfort and healing for those who are grieving and traumatised. We pray similarly for the community of Uvalde in Texas following the shootings at the school. We pray for a weakening of the power of the gun lobby in the States and for changes to the laws that will bring an end to these continued needless tragedies. We pray for all refugees and asylum seekers, especially those that have come to our shores. We give thanks for all those who have opened their homes to Ukrainian refugees and we pray that these would feel like safe havens and be places of healing and peace as they wait in hope for the day they'll be able to return home. We pray for those who are making decisions about claims for asylum. We know our government wants to break the power of trafficking gangs, and we ask for that too. But we pray that those vulnerable people who do reach our shores would be treated with dignity and kindness, rather than being de deported to inhospitable countries where they'll face further exploitation and danger. Where current legislation is not in line with your will, Lord, please bring change. We pray for those nations facing famine, Please give them their daily bread and show us how we can be part of the answer to their prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all the Jubilee celebrations last weekend and continue to pray for our Queen, asking that you would strengthen her and give her grace to continue to serve. Thank you for all the street parties and community celebrations that took place across the country. We ask that a continued spirit of joy and love and sharing would pervade our nation. We pray for those who are struggling financially with the rising cost of living. Give wisdom to our government to know how best to help and especially how to care well for the weak and vulnerable in our society. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our local community, we give thanks for the work of Ready Food, Serdic, CCA and the Mustard Tree, Street Pastors and so many other local charities that show your love in action. <clears throat> Bless those who are engaged in this ministry and help them to get to those in real need. We pray for the ministry in this parish of our three churches. Post-Covid we're aware that people are still tired and volunteers not as plentiful as previously. So Lord help us to know what you're asking of us, what we can take on and what we can't. Please re-energise those of us who are flagging and help us to serve <clears throat> in the strength that you provide. We pray too for all those couples planning to get married in our churches this summer. 
be at the heart of their preparations, Lord. Help them to know that you're real, that you love them, and help them to respond to your love in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those in particular need this morning. And Lord, perhaps especially today, we pray for those who feel far from you or abandoned by you. Those who feel that they haven't heard your voice or sensed your presence for a long time. May they hear your voice and sense your love and your strengthening spirit today. In the quiet, do lift to the Lord anyone particularly on your heart today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A collect for today. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That concludes our service for today. Thank you for joining with me. Uh, just one notice. So uh, coming up in a couple of weeks time, it's St John's Day or the St John's Day party, which we celebrate on the closest Sunday to St John's Day. Uh, a barbecue, lots of games, face painting, music, cakes. Uh, all sorts of fun. Um, if you're local and if you're able, do come. Do invite anybody you know, friends, neighbours, all are welcome. It's free and it's an opportunity for us to get to know our community better and to love one another more deeply. That's all for this week. Have a great time. Try and find some space to just listen for God in whatever way he might want to be speaking to you. I'll be here again next Sunday and next Sunday we're beginning a new sermon series uh, going through the book of Ephesians. So uh, you might like to have a little look at Ephesians uh, before we begin that series. I'll see you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>